Now that you've set up your community, branded the login and registration experience, and even set up social sign-on, our users can log in and access the community. Here we have our app launcher, but it's looking kind of lonely. We don't have any apps. The next thing we want to do is look at how Salesforce Identity can act as an identity provider to both web applications for single sign-on or mobile applications. Let's start by setting up a connected app. First, we'll head back to Setup and go to Apps. Create Apps, and you'll see down here, Connected Apps. Let's create a new connected app. We can give our app a name, My SSO App. We we'll want to put in our contact information, and we can even choose from one of these logos. In this case, we're setting up a SAML app, so let's grab this SAML logo. Not something you'd really do in production, but it'll work for our demo. Now, we need to set up the actual protocol that this application will speak. We can either choose from OAuth, OpenID Connect, or SAML. Let's use SAML, but we're going to need an app that speaks SAML. To get you up and running quickly, let's go back to the Salesforce Identity GitHub account. If you scroll down, you'll find Heroku Identity Java. This is a sample app that can get you up and running with single sign-on quickly. It speaks SAML out of the box and will deploy a sample app on Heroku. If you don't have a Heroku account, go sign up for one, and then you can simply click the Deploy to Heroku button. Now on the fly, Heroku is reading the configuration for our application and is going to let me create a new app. We'll call this My SSO App. Looks like that's available. And let's deploy for free. Okay, our app's ready. Let's take a look. I'll click View. And just like that, we've got a brand new app. You'll see this is a pretty simple app. It just has a big login button. Let's click Login and see what happens. When you're setting up SAML-based single sign-on, you need to describe your service provider, the application, to the identity provider, Salesforce, and the identity provider to your application. This sample app makes this really easy. We'll just copy the start URL, entity ID, and ACS URL. This is where we'll send users, how the app refers to itself, and where we'll send single sign-on messages, and go back to our connected app. We'll go ahead and put it, this in for our start URL. And since it's the same for each value, we can put in an, our entity ID and ACS URL. You could also specify the attribute you want to send as the subject of the assertion, the format for it, the issuer. You can even encrypt the response. We'll go ahead and save this. We've now configured a new connected app. The next thing we'll want to do is authorize this app. If we drill into our app, we can select profiles or permission sets in order to authorize this app. In this case, let's select customers and system administrators. We can go ahead and save this. Since our system administrator is allowed to use this app, we can actually test it from right here. This will use IDP initiated login. IDP initiated login is where you start at the identity provider and go directly to the service provider with a single sign-on message. Let's try it out. I click the button. Looks like our app isn't ready. That's because we didn't exchange metadata in both directions. Let's go back to our service provider and look at the rest of the instructions. Okay, we created our connected app. We authorized it. Now we need to tell our connected app about our identity provider. So I'm going to copy this command and head over to my terminal, paste it in, and then I'll head back to Salesforce, go to my connected app, and find my metadata discovery endpoint. The metadata describes our identity provider. Notice there's one for your My Domain. There's also one for our community. I'll grab our community metadata URL, copy it, paste it, hit enter, and now Heroku is restarting our app, and it should be configured to trust our identity provider. Let's try this again. We can go to our IDP initiated endpoint, click it, and now when this loads, our app will process the single sign-on message, and you'll see that the admin is signed in, and it's passed over a set of standard attributes. You can even enrich these attributes. Let's log out, head back to our app, scroll down, and go to Custom Attributes. We'll click New, and let's say we wanted to pass over our profile. We can insert a field. We can look at attributes from the user, system object, the org, you can send it as session, or our profile name. We'll insert that, save it, and if we switch back to our app, 
click login, this will perform SP initiated SAML where we start at the service provider and perform single sign-on. We'll see that the user's logged in and we've passed over their profile. Switching back to our community user, if we reload Daisy's app launcher, we'll see the SSO app now shows up. She can easily click this app, get single sign-on, and we'll notice that Daisy's information is passed over as well as her profile. You can now set up SAML-based single sign-on for any of your apps.